Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us today for part three of our four-part in 4XA web series. During this presentation, all lines will be muted, and we ask that you use the question box for all questions. Presenting today is the president of Guide Technologies, Brad Spates. Brad has 30 plus years of experience with Infor-XA and was instrumental in working with Infor on bringing XA into the cloud. I know Brad has a lot of valuable and exciting information to share. So without further ado, Brad, take it away. Thank you, Elsa. Uh, and thank you everybody for uh, taking time this afternoon to learn a little bit more about uh, XA in the cloud. Uh, some of you may know of me either through uh, my pre previous employment, I was with Infor and worked uh, very closely with the uh, XA Cloud and Cloud Ops Group to, to get uh, customers uh, to migrate from on-premise to, to the cloud with Infor XA. It's an exciting topic. It's, uh, there's a lot of momentum. It's really the fastest uh, growing deployment option out there. And I'm, I'm really pleased that uh, Infor XA has a, has a viable option to, to move to the cloud. Um, I'm with Guide Technologies and just, uh, uh, just going to start off with just go through a quick agenda. Uh, first of all, just a little bit of level set on why cloud, uh, you know, why why are companies moving to the cloud and what are some of the benefits and, and, and so forth. Uh, then I'll talk specifically about the XA cloud offering and why it's a little bit different and why it's uh, really uh, some of the key components of that are very uh, unique to the XA customer base. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about the XA cloud assessment process. How do we go about taking a look to see if cloud makes sense uh, for you? Um, part of that is also, I'll, I'll just kind of give an example uh, of a total cost of ownership uh, assessment that we work with our customers and uh, prospects on XA cloud with to help them evaluate um, the, uh, from a financial standpoint, what the impact of the uh, uh, moving to the cloud is and then just a, a summary and wrap up, and then we'll have questions. First of all, what is cloud uh, or software as a service, SaaS? Um, when you look at your current on-premise uh, infrastructure and systems, it's com uh, comprised of you know, applications, data, middleware, uh, operating systems, servers, storage, and networking. And they're all, as you can see, all in uh, dark blue. And that, that means uh, they're owned and managed by you, the customer. Uh, the next progression across the, the spectrum would be moving moving from on-prem to a hosted, and that's really where you um, run your applications on somebody else's hardware at another another location. So the uh, the applications, the data, the middleware, and the OS uh, you still own and manage. Uh, the physical hardware is is now managed by somebody else. And now you share on the responsibility for the the network communicating from your locations to the to your hosting uh, provider. And really, the third um, uh, moving to the right is SaaS. And there, there you basically own and manage your data, and you also share in the in the management and the networking uh, infrastructure with with uh, with the SaaS provider. Um, so one of the nice things about this is that you um, move from uh, really owning all aspects of your infrastructure, the data, uh, operating systems, middleware, and so forth, to basically you manage your data and uh, and, co and collaborative work, uh, manage the, the network uh, in, a, in a SaaS environment. So when you look at what's, what are the costs, and I, I'm just going to kind of kind of highlight, currently on, a, on an on-premise um, environment, you, about 9% of the cost of an on-premise on uh, implementation is a software cost, um, software licensing. Uh, all of the, everything below the waterline, as you can see, all the hidden costs, let's call them, are customizations, implementation, all the hardware, uh, all your personnel costs, maintenance, training, uh, and then all the effort that, it, all the operational effort that it's required to, to uh, apply fixes, cumes, patches, uh, do tuning, customizations, integrations, uh, getting to the most current level, uh, maintaining your network security, and and so forth. So a lot of a lot of costs in addition to the the licensing costs uh, that's required in an on-premise uh, implementation. When you look at moving to the cloud, uh, a lot of those costs are now in your software subscription. So and, uh, and so that subscription costs. Uh, that subscription fee covers uh, the cost of all the hardware, uh, all the software, 
and and it really all the managed services and so forth that goes with, with supporting your environment, you still would have costs for implementation, customizations, and, and training. But uh, we're shifting the the, uh, the the cost structure from uh, on-premise to to the cloud, uh, really from a, a term license and a lot of um, hardware costs, capital costs, and uh, and maintenance and operational costs. To really, a lot of those costs are covered in your subscription fee. So, what what is driving customers? What is driving customers to uh, to explore and move to the cloud? But it really kind of depends on the business and the business you're in, or the situ current situation you're in. We have some situations, particularly uh, like on the IBM uh, i series, where some customers are their i series are coming to end of life or end of support, and so they're going to be forced to make a decision to to buy another server or two and implement that server and, and, and pay for that server from a capital expenditure standpoint. Uh, others um, are on a, on a growth path. Other companies are on a, on a growth path through acquisition, and it's really easy to, to add um, sites, add users, uh, add environments in a cloud environment. It's very, very scalable, very, very granular as far as uh, adding additional resources and capabilities. Uh, in some cases, we've had uh, customers that have had uh, business interruption, natural disasters, um, system outages, uh, and, and so forth, and that's driving uh, senior management to take a look at how can we better um, secure our systems and our, our, our solutions um, than in our, our current on-premise um, uh, situation. How can we better protect ourselves in case of natural disasters or business interruptions? One of the other key uh, areas that uh, a lot of our customers are taking a look at is, do I really want to spend my time managing IT or do I want to spend my, my time and energy in managing the business? And so by moving uh, all of your IT uh, infrastructure and hardware infrastructure and ongoing daily, weekly, monthly operations and maintenance into the cloud, it allows uh, you know, skilled resources within a customer to uh, really focus on the business problems at hand versus doing day-to-day -day operations and maintenance. So a lot of other reasons, but those are just some of the reasons that uh, people are, are uh, really looking at uh, moving, moving to the cloud. Another one is really uh, just total cost of ownership. When you compare <clears throat> all the costs involved, it may be you know, a better longer-term bet to uh, a, a better uh, cost-effective solution to move to the cloud versus uh, continue to remain on premise. A lot of studies out there about the benefits of cloud. Um, this particular one has some some um, you know some uh, quantifiable uh, impacts on business. I'm not saying this is everybody's going to get the same results by any means, but in, in a lot of, in their study that says you know the average uh, increase in company growth is 19.63 percent. Um, the average reduction in IT spending is 15 percent. Uh, you know, so a lot of a lot of uh, you know statistics and uh, and some analysis on on companies that are moving to the cloud and what some of the business impact is on their uh, on their uh, on their business and from the, an IT standpoint. So when you look at uh, some of the strategic benefits of choosing a cloud. I, I, and you know these are some of the the top areas, but really the the focus on core competency, as I mentioned earlier, you know really do you want to manage uh, i t and manage uh, systems, or do you really want your i t staff with uh, you know you know skills and experience to really focus on uh, more important things like productivity gains and business process improvement? Um, it can be when you take a look at all the the costs, uh, both hard dollars and soft dollar costs and and benefits. Uh, could it can be a, a, a lower cost of, uh, of ownership over the long term from an on on, on premise uh, solution? Plus, it, it eliminates capital expenditures that are required on a reoccurring basis for uh, servers and software and so forth. Uh, one of the other uh, benefits is that when we go to the cloud, uh, we um, and I'll talk a little bit more specifically about the XA uh, cloud offering is that we're expected to and will be uh, working with our customers to get them current and maintain that currency so that they're working on the, the latest and greatest Info4XA uh, technology and versions and releases uh, in their business instead of falling behind and having to 
to maybe at some point in time do a, a very large project to get to get current. Um, in the uh, in the cloud environment, I think because of the scalability and the granularity of our uh, cloud offering, you can add resources, uh, whether it's users, um, more horse, you know, CPW, memory, disk, very, very quickly, very, very easily, in a very, very cost-effective manner. Uh, instead of saying, well, you're trying to get by on a certain size machine and then having you do a major upgrade, uh, which not only takes a lot of uh, some dollars, but also takes a lot of time away from your IT staff uh, that they could be spending and working on uh, business processes and, and efficiencies. Uh, disaster recovery. Some customers are uh, have a have a, a direction that they really want to have a, a much higher uh, reliability and availability um, and recoverability of their systems. In uh, in the cloud uh, cloud ops, we have a, a, a 99.5 percent uptime. And that's right in our uh, uh, SLAs. Uh, so our, our availability and recoverability, and I'll talk a little bit about that a little bit more, is, is very, very high. And the other thing, and I'll talk about this a little bit more, is uh, best-in-class security. Uh, we read all the time and hear about all the customers uh, and companies out there that are being uh, held uh, with ransomware, uh, being hacked, uh, and so forth. Uh, I think one of the things that, that uh, in our XA cloud solution, we do have best of class security, both from a hardware standpoint, from a physical standpoint, and also from a software standpoint, uh, to the point where I don't, I don't know of one on-premise customer that has the same level of security that we, we have in the XA cloud. And just talk about this for a second. Um, I don't have the exact figures, but uh, uh, talking with Ross Freeman, uh, who works closely with our IBM uh, partners, is that the uh, the fastest growing uh, hardware platform at IBM uh, over the last couple of years is the uh, IBM I or the Power I, and uh, it's it's kind of interesting because uh, it's been there for it's been in the marketplace for a long, long time, but it seems to be uh, regaining some of its. Uh, Popularity, and I think one of the one of the big things that's attractive to uh, IBM I customers is the security. It is uh, I'm not, I can't say that it's never been breached, but you don't hear about IBM I systems being compromised or held ransom uh, from from the, the hackers and so forth. So it's also it's very very secure uh, from that standpoint, and uh, and also extremely reliable, as you all would know. The, the other thing is uh, part of the uh, in, uh, Infor Cloud solution is that they're, they have a very um, uh, comprehensive backup and recovery uh, process. So there's a, a lot of redundancy built in. There are nightly backups, weekly, weekly backups, annual backups. Uh, those are retained over a long, long period of time uh, so that, uh, that your, first of all, the, the, the task of doing the backups is, is removed from, from you. Uh, but second of all, we have the access to that, that data uh, in a lot of different uh, time frames and so forth uh, in case we need to re have a recovery. And, uh, and that's all ret retained and that's part of our cloud, uh, cloud offering. So some of the system I challenges are, that we see out there today uh, when you look across the, the XA customer base is that uh, you know, the, the IBM I and, and, and Infor-XA application skills are really, are getting harder and harder to find. Uh, there are uh, not as many of them out there. Uh, you know, some of them are moving into retirement and not as many coming up through the ranks uh, with the kind of skill sets that we need. You know, the aging IT workforce, the, the silver tsunami as we call that, uh, we're seeing a lot of customer environments being impacted uh, by people in their 50s, 60s, uh, moving to retirement and leaving a, a void in, in the skill set and uh, and in a resource. The other thing we kind of get spo got spoiled on with the uh, ER, ER, you know, ERP on the IBM I is that the, the skill set that was required to manage uh, that that uh, that system it used to be just RPG. Now now it's a much more complex, uh, diverse uh, tech tech stack, and so those uh, not you know those skill sets or the combination of those skill sets are also hard to find. And uh, because of the lean nature of many of the XA uh, IT shops, um, 
there's just there's little bandwidth to uh, to augment uh, the the small staffs that we ha already have in place. And so that's one of the one of the these are some of the driving factors that uh, the system I XA cloud can help uh, can, can help address. So when you look at you know a, a, a cloud solution, you really should have and be be expecting to have a best best practice, best in class security uh, system, uh, world class reliability, which I think we all would agree the uh, IBM I is, uh, full data redundancy. Uh, and, and hardware redundancy. Um, Infor uh, is managing all of the infrastructure. Uh, there's disaster recovery as uh, as an option, and uh, should have expect a, a, a very effective and efficient uh, uh, total cost of ownership. So let's talk specifically now about the XA Cloud um, offering. Um, and again, this is uh, it is a very you know it's, it's, a, it's a unique offering uh, for XA customers, and we'll kind of, kind of talk through some of the key points uh, of what the, the cloud offering is for XA. You know, first and foremost, it's uh, converting your uh, term or perpetual license. That's your ILF initial license fee and annual license fees or ASF uh, annual support fees to a subscription. So we, the, you know, so the, the the good news is that. Your, what you're paying in annual license fees or annual support fees gets applied and gets converted towards your subscription costs. And I'll talk about the, uh, the, some of the subscription costs a little bit later. So you'll no longer have an annual support fee um, uh, that, that you pay on an annual basis. One of the other very significant um, uh, features of the XA Cloud is its single tenant. Um, you know, in, in a lot of the uh, ERPs and other uh, productivity software like uh, Office 365 and other types of things, they're multi-tenant. And so that uh, your, you know, modifications, extensions, and so forth are, are you know, typically not uh, allowed or are, are limited. And then you also um, are running on the same code base as, you know, many, many other customers. And when uh, the vendor decides to make uh, uh, an enhancement to the software, put on a, a PTF release or, or, or an upgrade, uh, you don't really have any choice in that. It's, it happens, and it happens maybe in a, on a Tuesday night. Uh, and so you, you're not in full control of your, your systems and your, and your, uh, and your data. Um, typically, the, our XA Cloud SaaS uh, offering is a, is a three-year agreement. Uh, what's nice about that is it's a it's a fixed cost for three years, so it doesn't have escalations from year two to year uh, year, you know, year one to year two to year three. Uh, it, it's very very flexible. It supports multiple LPARs, logical partitions, and multiple environments. And I'll talk a little bit more about that uh, shortly. So you can have single partition, multiple partition, multiple partitions. Uh, uh, test partitions. You can also have multiple environments within uh, one or more partitions. Uh, one of the nice uh, uh, features is that the uh, uh, disk storage is all solid state, so it's going to be fast and, and uh, with a very very good performance and very very uh, good access times. <clears throat> um, hosting and the application management uh, managed services is, is provided by Infor. So Infor is the primary contractor, and it, it, Infor and, and the managed services will, will do all the um, XA, uh, PTFs, QMs, and upgrades. And Abacus, uh, who's our Infor hosting partner, uh, takes care of the infrastructure and the IBMI uh, upgrades and, and uh, Infor OS, or not Infor OS, the uh, IBMI uh, upgrades and, and uh, releases and so forth. Part of the uh, standard service level agreement, it's a 99.5% uptime in the uh, in our service level agreements. And if you have uh, choose the uh, the disaster recovery option, um, it's a, a one hour recovery point. Um, and a, it's a it's, excuse me, if you have the disaster recovery, it's a four hour uh, return to operations and a, a one hour re recovery point. And if you don't have disaster recovery, it's a 24-hour uh, recovery point and 24-hour uh, return to operations. In the XA Cloud, uh, everybody gets the, the base um, 
uh, XA footprint, which includes um, the transaction user bundle, uh, IFM, and also uh, enterprise financials. Uh, In4OS is, is optional. You get the power suite and uh, and other XA uh, iSeries XA modules uh, can be supported in in, in most cases. Uh, you also get uh, your your Infor Extreme support that's that you're used to now, and um, and also because you're in a single tenant, uh, third party uh, applications and custom applications are allowed in most cases. They they aren't aren't going to be supported by Infor, but if they run in the I series, so you can uh, you continue you continue to run them with your XA uh, 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 footprint. Uh, and then uh, data communications uh, is, at a, is a customer cost and discretion, and we'll work through with you in the planning process, the assessment process, what makes sense for your organization in terms of uh, connections, whether it's VPN, MPLS, SD-WAN, what, what, uh, whatever makes the most sense for your environment. Uh, but those would be, you know, a cost and uh, the responsibility of, uh, of, of yourself. Here's a, just a quick snapshot of what the uh, uh, XA Cloud footprint uh, consists of. These are the the applications that are in the uh, in the standard bundle in the cloud, and, and the Ion uh, process and Mingle those are optional, uh, not required, but they are optional. Uh, best practices. So, from an XA Cloud standpoint, this is really the uh, the way. The, these are the best practices for moving uh, XA to the cloud. Um, so, the uh, the system would be upgraded to the most current release when we get to the cloud. So, we really want to get. Uh, if you're not current now, we want to get you current um, in the cloud. And the benefit of that is if, uh, uh, many, many fold. Number one, working with the latest and greatest of the InfraXA applications and technologies. But number two, once you are current in the cloud, then all the uh, InfraXA PTFs, QMs, and releases are, are applied for you and, and managed for you by Infor, not yourself. So once you're current, the the, the maintenance of that and the uh, the uh, keeping keeping current is really um, Infor takes the lead on that now, and again, because we're in a single tenant environment, uh, nobody's going to be forced to do it on a Tuesday night, uh, like in a multi-tenant. Uh, Infor, uh, uh, cloud ops, and so forth will work with you to, to really to put to put a plan in place for the best time to apply PTFs QMs or to you'll go on to the next release. Uh, so. Uh, the uh, the system is maintained at current release and patches are applied on a regular basis again with consultation with uh, with the customer. Ideally, uh, we would look at a three uh, LPAR or three partitions, logical partitions, a production partition, a uh, a development partition or a test partition, and a disaster recovery partition. Uh, with, you know to give you uh, a disaster recovery solution. And uh, again, I'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, we will do a, a role a, a role swap prior to the uh, initial startup, and we'll we'll do a role swap on a disaster recovery uh, basis on an annual basis. Again, uh, with the DR option, disaster recovery option, one hour uh, RPO and a four hour RTO, and uh, and if you are in a, a DR environment, uh, your backups will be taken off of the uh, the target the DR target system versus your production system that gives you uh, a, 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 you know, a much better uh, production uh, capabilities, 24-7 production capabilities. Uh, World-class security management. Uh, I think uh, all of the Infor applications with the, the move to the cloud have really been hardened from uh, and you know, evaluated, assessed, and tested and hardened uh, to provide uh, you know, really uh, world-class security. And uh, and also, I know the uh, there's just tremendous amount of security uh, built into the uh, the XA Cloud uh, solution, both uh, from an Abacus standpoint and from an XA standpoint. Again, I mentioned solid state storage, um, flexible user count and system capacity. We're we're very very flexible as far as adding uh, users, uh, CPW, memory, and disk. Um, we can probably if you were and looking at acquisition, acquisition or growth, we should be able to add capacity to your system probably faster than we can do the paperwork. Um, so it's it's that 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 fast, and it's also very granular. Uh, you don't have to turn on another 
uh, CPU. Uh, and uh, if, if you're an on-premise, you can maybe take uh, take on an additional two or three thousand CPW, another couple hundred gig of disk, uh, if you wanted, uh, instead of uh, turning on a whole new processor or upgrading your system. Um, full user um, Infor user interfaces. All the Infor inter interfaces are, are available. And the only other only other um, recommendation is if you're using PowerLink, uh, we recommend uh, RDP servers to support the remote uh, the, the the performance of that. I'm going to go and uh, I'm going to slide this over. Just this is just an example. I know nobody will be able to read this, but this is a document that uh, that outlines the the roles and responsibilities in a cloud suite system I environment between the customer and in Infor. And again, I'm not going to go. This is probably a five. It is a five-page document, and I just want you to take a look on the far right-hand side. These are the Infor responsibilities, and the column in the middle are the customer responsibilities. So it's, it's a shared. Uh, roles and responsibilities, but if, if you take a look at all of the check marks under the Infor responsibilities, those would fall upon uh, the, yourself, the customer, if you were uh, continue to stay on an on-prem system versus uh, uh, Infor offloading a lot of the a lot of this. Uh, they're taking on that responsibility, manage that on a, a daily, weekly, monthly, annual basis. So I'm just kind of going to scroll down here. And you can see that the the roles and responsibilities uh, are split between the customer and Infor, but a lot of the, uh, particularly once we are uh, installed and running in the cloud, a lot of the day-to-day -day and most of the day-to-day -day operations are Infor's responsibility, not the customer responsibility. Certainly, you have responsibility for your data, responsibility for training, testing, and things like that, which which we would expect. But uh, uh, the infrastructure and the XA uh, code base and PTFs and so forth, backups, uh, system monitoring for errors and messages and so forth uh, are all in force responsibility. Performance monitoring, uh, you can see uh, a lot of these tasks and a lot of these responsibilities and, and so forth really shift from, from yourself to in for. And again, I know you can't read all this. I'm just using this as an example. This is a document that, uh, that we have that we can it can uh, share with you, um, but it's it really kind of just kind of want to make the point that a lot of the workload that you're experiencing now will be shifted to Infor with, with the move to the cloud. Uh, disaster recovery. Um, you know, most of the most of our customers nowadays on the uh, IBMI are, don't have a, uh, a true disaster recovery plan. And uh, when I ask customers you know, if their system went down today, how long would it take them to be back in business? And uh, I think, and, and truthfully, most you know some people all oh, be only a day or two days. I think truthfully, it's probably well well in excess of that. So it really, there is there's a business reason to take a serious look at disaster recovery. It's, you know, how long can you be down, and what's what's my risk for for data loss and and shutting down one or more plants and and so forth. Um, so the key benefits is is you you uh, with a disaster recovery uh, solution uh, is that your mission if your if your systems and your applications are mission critical, uh, we can uh, with, a, with a disaster recovery system we can minimize the downtime uh, and the re and, and the recovery time in case of an outage. Uh, you also, from an RPO standpoint, uh, how important your data we we based on the backup uh, schemes and the disaster recovery option uh, it should be minimal if any data loss in, in an outage. Um, the, the simplified maintenance. Um, we can do updates to the test machine. Uh, uh, we can do updates and tests on a DR machine, and then restore to your production machine. So, you know, uh, far less impact on your production environment uh, uh, with that. 24-hour, uh, 24/7 uh, availability and backups can be done. Uh, can be provided with doing the backups off your DR system, and. Uh, and, and it really, in a, in a, in a recovery mode, uh, it, it takes us takes us minutes or hours to recover versus, uh, in some cases, days. So if you look at the system I cloud infrastructure in the uh, 
in the best practices, we would have three LPARs, or logical partitions, a production, which would be in uh, one location, a, uh, a DR for production, which would be in a, a second location, and then, if, and then a test or a non-production uh, LPAR, which would be in near the, 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 the first location. So you'd have, uh, in, a, in this environment, you'd have two uh, LPARs at one site, and the DR uh, uh, with, you know, LPAR would be at an, at an offsite at a different data center. And again, the uh, RPO and the RTO uh, in this three LPAR uh, solution. Uh, the, the minimum model is, is a single production uh, LPAR, and, uh, and so you have a, it's obviously a simpler uh, environment, uh, but in, in your RPO and RTO would be 24 hours and 24 hours, which certainly isn't as good as the, uh, the disaster recovery, but I would venture to say it's probably better than you, what you could experience with a major system outage uh, on an on-premise solution. And just to take a look at you know this from a, from a graphical standpoint, uh, Abacus is our our hosting uh, partner, and so they would have the the production and the non productions would be in their Atlanta uh, data center, and the disaster recovery would be in their Texas data center. And if we were uh, implementing an N4OS, that is, that's that's uh, Amazon Web Services multi tenant, and that would connect to. Uh, all of your LPARs uh, through the through the net, inter internet. From an assessment process, it's a fairly straightforward. Um, if you uh, had an interest in, in exploring what uh, XA Cloud would look like for your business and what some of the capabilities and benefits and costs are, uh, there's a very high level questionnaire. It's uh, it's, it's you know, a dozen questions or so. We either can fill that out. Uh, on paper, or it could be a conversation and kind of walk through it uh, over the phone. Um, so that's it's pretty pretty simple there. One of the key things, though, is we we'd ask you to run the performance monitor uh, on your IBMI now, so we can get a, a, a good picture of your current workload. Uh, then we do the analysis and make some recommendations on how much resource do we need to move your workload into the cloud. Uh, we want to uh, take a look at your current infrastructure and make sure we understand your, your I-Series, your network, and any Windows service requirements that you have. Uh, also, uh, third-party applications and any integrations, we'd want to discuss and uh, document those. Again, third-party applications that run on the I-Series can be moved into the XA Cloud uh, LPAR, uh, but they would be the customer's uh, responsibility for uh, the license license keys and getting the getting new license keys uh, for the new for the new environment and uh, Infor would not do the managed services or, or support the third-party products but they would run in your uh, in your production environment we go through we have to go through a process and this may sometimes is as complicated as uh, as, as uh, configuring uh, the the LPARs is your way in options wide area network options so in your current uh, on-premise solution uh, probably most if not all of your users are connected uh, locally uh, and, and unless you have remotes which would be connected through some some wide area network uh, in, a, in a XA cloud the, you wouldn't have local users that everybody would be connected through a wide area network two abacus is uh, one or, or both data centers and so we need to explore with you what the what the way and options are what's the best Best uh, way to connect everybody to to the data centers and uh, and the and the costs associated with that. Um, based on the the questionnaire and the uh, and the analysis that we do from your performance monitor, we do make recommendations on the uh, size, uh, the number, and the size of the uh, LPARs uh, that you'd be running. Um, and then we put together uh, a pricing pricing uh, and the infrastructure and the pricing. And then we'd also like to work with you to put together a total cost of ownership, which compare um, staying on premise over the next three to five years. What would be what are your current costs and what are your expected costs in terms of hardware, software, uh, annual license fees, additional software, additional users, uh, and also personnel costs and operational costs. And compare that to um, to what those what the costs would be in a ho in a uh, in a SaaS environment with XA Cloud. So that's something we do with 
work with you uh, very closely to help you uh, uh, come up with some good financial information on, on staying where you're at an on-premise environment or moving to the cloud and having a good uh, cost and benefit uh, comparison. There's, there's no, people ask, well, what's, what's a cost? It, it, you know, the answer is depends. Uh, there's no, there's no, ans no simple answer. Because, because this is a custom solution, um, it's not you know, $100 a month per user type of thing. Uh, we're taking existing customers with existing workloads, with existing applications and, uh, and, and data, and moving into the cloud. So every, you know, by definition, every, every one of these systems is a custom configuration. And so the pricing is based on the hardware requirements. How much resource do we need to provision uh, for, for you to run your, your business in the cloud? And that's the number and the size of the LPARs. Uh, and that would be how much CPW, horsepower, uh, how much storage, uh, and how much memory do you need to, uh, to run your, uh, your business? And, and a lot of this is determined based on the performance monitor and the analysis and the questionnaire that we go through through the assessment process. We would the, the communications infrastructure will make a make a difference as far as the uh, the, the cost for the cloud, um, the number of users. Uh, if you're going to deploy uh, PowerLink, um, then how many uh, RDP servers do we need? Um, if you want to have InfoOS OS in the cloud, that would be uh, another another um, uh, part of the configuration and, and pricing. Um, if you want to move Windows servers into into the cloud, uh, we would need to go through those and configure and provision and price those out as well. And then uh, any other additional software that you are looking to to add to the cloud, and uh, and you know non infor and custom software may affect pricing. Um, in the cloud migrations that we've done, third party applications, uh, we have not been. Uh, uh, not have not had any bad surprises as far as uh, software vendors charging uh, a, a significant premium for moving the workload from on-premise to the XA cloud. But again, it's something we need you'll need to talk to your third-party vendors uh, about uh, just to confirm. Next, I'm going to just kind of give you a real high-level example of the total cost of ownership. Uh, analysis that we work, and this is kind of an iterative process with our customers. Uh, you know, input from you, input from us, and we kind of work through this over a, over a period of time. Um, but the first thing we start out with is we we kind of this is a this is a, actually a, a picture of an actual customer. We we did the analysis, the performance analysis, and you can see that their current on-prem configuration in in the uh, in the uh, column in the uh, second column. And then the proposed uh, cloud production configuration in the the third column, and then the, in the uh, DR configuration on the on the fourth column. So in this case, they they have a very large, very low, very large and very old uh, processor, uh, 23,000 CPW. But when we did the analysis, we found out that uh, they only their average utilization of that processor was 4.6 percent, and their max utilization over the uh, over the performance period was 36%. So they had a very large processor that they weren't utilizing, uh, uh, you know, uh, weren't maxing out at all, and it really had very relatively low uh, utilization. Uh, the amount of memory they had, uh, they had six terabytes of disk that were mirrored, mirrored but they were at 59% uh, utilization of those uh, uh, of the disk. And so we came back, and based on that analysis and the, what we talked about in the questionnaire is we recommended a uh, 12,000 CPW uh, processor, uh, which is uh, about 50% of their, of their current CPW. But again, they only, only, uh, they, they only averaged 4.6% utilization and a 36% max utilization. Uh, 96 uh, gig of memory and 5,000 uh, gigabytes of, uh, of uh, solid state disk. And then up from a disaster recovery standpoint, we mirrored that. So it's 12,000 uh, CPW, 96 gigabytes of, of memory, and 5,000 or 5 terabytes of uh, solid state disk. And this was a 150 registered users. And based on their PowerLink users, we recommended two RDP servers. Uh, so that was the configuration that we went through. And it kind of gives you an example of what we look at when we start looking at provisioning uh, resources for the for the, the XA Cloud. 
So on, again, this is an eye chart. I'm not, uh, I don't think anybody can actually see the, the details, but we kind of go through this process. And again, this working closely with the customer, you know, what are the, what are the five-year uh, hardware costs? So if you're on a three to five to seven-year-old IBM, I, you know, IBM uh, processor, sometime in the next one, two or three years or, or so, you're going to need to buy and replace uh, that I-series to, to stay any kind of relative currency. Um, and then there's a addition, you know, there's costs of implementing the new hardware. There's uh, the uh, IBM hardware maintenance and software subscription costs. Um, and uh, and also if you're looking at moving Windows servers, we need to quantify what the Windows servers costs and, and uh, so forth, or and or upgrades for both the hardware and the uh, operating system software. If you were uh, looking at disaster recovery, then that adds a, a whole other level of uh, cost structure. We need to look at uh, a second IBM I series for, uh, in a separate location, um, and you know, so there'd be hardware acquisition, there'd be hardware uh, maintenance and software subscription. Uh, there'd be an uh, an, an Infor XA ADRS uh, or DR license, so that, that that comes at a cost as well. Um, and if you were going to have this at a, a, a non-company location, non-company owned location, you'd take it and put it in somebody else's rack or in a hosting environment. They would charge you a hosting cost on a uh, on an annual basis. And then if you were in a you know true DR, uh, you'd need uh, hard uh, high availability replication software. Um, so those are some of the uh, the costs that associated with the disaster recovery um, environment. And then the, the next category is your IT costs. You know, what are you paying now, uh, you know, both internal and externally for, for maintaining your systems, PTFs, CUMES, development, consulting, and so forth, and, and how much of that, you know, when we talk about the XA Cloud, how much of that would go away when we, when, you know, when we talk about a managed service environment uh, in the XA Cloud solution? Uh, application maintenance. This is your annual license fees. Um, so your, your annual license fees, uh, X dollars a year it goes up, you know, six percent or or so a, a year. Um, so those those costs uh, would be ongoing in in a uh, in a uh, on-premise uh, installation, and any third-party maintenance costs that you're currently paying now, and then any other services costs that you need uh, along the way. And these are these are just some of the categories. As we go through it, through you might have other cost factors that you are currently have now. Uh, some people are paying. Uh, for uh, off-site uh, cold, you know, like a cold, uh, cold, cold backup site and so forth. So, you know, this is just, these are just examples, but it's part of the kind of illustrates the exercise that we go through with you to help uh, uh, take a look at your five-year costs from an on-premise solution, and then over to the right-hand side, the five-year costs for the SaaS solution. So, for the for the XA Cloud, there would be a subscription. Uh, that's an annual subscription. It's uh, it's fixed for for uh, three years, and that would include uh, you know all of your um, you know it would it would uh, eliminate your annual license fees and all your hardware costs and also includes all your man the managed services that we provide and so forth. And then the other nice thing is that um, your current a annual license fees you'd get a credit for the unused portion of that uh, when you went to the XA Cloud. So in some cases, if you're you know, six months into your if you if you're six months into your annual license fee period, you'd get a six month credit back in the, in year one. You know, you know, right after you sign your XA Cloud offering as a, as a check back from in for or a credit. Uh, your WAN costs; those are costs that would uh, be incurred to connect your locations to the Abacus data center. Uh, same third party costs, and then we would have uh, want to look at costs for moving to the cloud. Um, and so there'd be a, a, a year one one-time cost to get you from on-premise to to the cloud, and then a comparison: what's what's that look like? What's the total cost of that over five years, and what's the, compared to what the total cost of the uh, on-premise solution? So with that, key takeaways uh, on the XA Cloud. Um, you can you can have a high availability without a high a very expensive cash uh, capital outlay. Um, XA Cloud is a single tenant and allows customizations and third-party applications. You know that's really mandatory for our XA customer base. Um, 
you, we can augment your IBMI and InfoXA resources uh, and actually um, remove a lot of the requirements that you have for doing, uh, you know, having that resource and, and that time allocated to maintaining your, your uh, maintaining and upgrading your IBM systems and your uh, InfoXA systems. And it's a predictable cost. It's a three-year subscription. Uh, it's the same, you know, unless unless we add more resources or add more uh, processors and so forth, it's a it's a very predictable cost. Um, so it really it really frees up your organization uh, and operations from performing all the hardware uh, upgrades and refreshes. Um, the we can uh, you, you know optimize the utilization of all the, all of your your infrastructure. Uh, keeps your uh, applications current. Once you're current uh, in the cloud, we will Infor will work with you to keep you current, and and uh, they provide the uh, the technical resource to for the PTFs, QMs, and releases. Probably one of the key key things it's, it's it keeps you up to date on the technology. You no longer will, you know would you uh, fall you know one two three releases behind. We will once you're in the cloud, uh, we will main, help you maintain uh, currency. Uh, of the applications and so forth. And I think from risk management, uh, even if you don't have the disaster recovery LPAR, I believe our our single LPAR solution is going to have a much higher recovery, a much, much faster recovery than an on-premise solution that doesn't have a full HA uh, component to it. So uh, why does cloud make sense? Yeah, predictable, uh, long-term uh, total cost of ownership. Uh, you know, could be some cost savings or at least some capital uh, expenditure savings by eliminating uh, you know, large hardware upgrades, uh, large software uh, purchases, um, and uh, and maybe a, from a disaster recovery um, standpoint, that, that can be very expensive. Um, provides uh, ongoing upgrades and enhancements, a uh, single point of accountability. This is an INFOR agreement, and so INFOR has, takes responsibility with their stand, uh, SLA. To, uh, to maintain the systems and keep the systems available and performing for you. Um, probably one of the biggest things, and we, we hear it today, that my IT staff is thin. Uh, we have a big backlog of things we want to do, but we spend a lot of our time maintaining systems with the one environment, five environments, uh, and so forth. That's just a lot of IT uh, staff time for basically maintaining a system instead of trying to to uh, you know, grow the system and expand the, the capabilities of the system, um, and hopefully op optimize your business processes. So with that, um, that is kind of a quick uh, once over on uh, on cloud in general and the XA cloud uh, offering uh, specifically. I guess with that, I'd like to first of all put in a plug for our our, our uh, XA. Uh, series, webinar series part number four is Enterprise Financials, uh, and that is uh, February 5th, uh, 2, 2 p.m. Eastern Time. And so I'd like to keep that up, and if, uh, I'd like to open it up, uh, Elsa, if there are any uh, questions. Yep, I actually have a couple that came through during the presentation. First one is, are there IBM or third-party application software costs if you have production, DR, and development partitions? Um, no. So that's one of the benefits. If, uh, if I have, uh, you know, a, an XA footprint, you know, maybe a hundred users and I move to the cloud, um, I don't have to buy another copy or I don't have to have the ADRS license for my, uh, DR partition. That's part of the, the, that will be part of the, 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 the subscription that will be both the production LPAR, a test LPAR and a, uh, and a DRL par, so there would be no additional, you know, software costs. It would be part of your subscription. Great. And another question is: Will XA customers in Europe have access to XA in the cloud, and how will the performance be? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, there's that's a, a multi-part answer. Uh, yes, uh, currently uh, European customers. Yeah, well, I, I can answer it two ways. Uh, we we have customers running in the XA cloud and at Abacus that are both U.S. companies with uh, with uh, European European sites. So we we do have customers around the world running on Abacus uh, in XA cloud. So that that is that is a fact. Um, 
uh, if you're headquartered in, in uh, Europe, you can still run on the uh, XA cloud in the U.S., but uh, my understanding, and I'd have to get confirmation from, uh, from Ross Freeman and Abacus, is that Abacus will be um, uh, starting a uh, European data center here in the, in the near future to provide uh, an additional uh, option for uh, European customers. And as far as performance, uh, certainly we uh, we again the, any kind you know everybody uh, in a the XA cloud will be on a um, uh, uh, will be a remote user uh, by definition, um, and so the from a performance standpoint, you know pr properly sizing the part the LPARs is 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 one important part. Also depends on what kind of uh, user interface you're using. If you're using uh, PowerLink, uh, we would need to provision. Uh, RDP servers, and that would perform well over the over the web uh, anywhere. And then uh, also, as uh, Netlink gets more and more mature, we've got customers that are using Netlink now. And as that becomes more mature, and as we add a few more capabilities, that will be the primary um, interface for all XA customers, not just XA Cloud customers. And we expect that to perform well um, in the cloud or you know anywhere. Great. Well, we are nearing the top of the hour here. If there are any more questions, please go ahead and send them through that question box. This webinar was recorded, and we will be sending out the recording later this week to all who attended. And if you have any co-employees who may have registered but did not attend, we will also be sending that to them as well. All right. Well, I'm not seeing any more. Oh, here we go. Okay. One last one and kind of open-ended for you, Brad. How do you see okay. the future of XA within Infor? Uh, very, very well. Actually, I was I'm, uh, spent the morning with Ross Freeman going through uh, with the with the customer where XA is at and where it's going. Uh, as Ross would say, the uh, release 9.3, which is the next big release. Is the single biggest development project for XA ever. Um, so from that standpoint, it's certainly getting a lot of R&D and a lot of resource to continue the modernization of the product. Uh, a lot of new functionality, uh, taking advantage of a lot of the technology that uh, that both Infor XA has has on their own, and also what Infor uh, uh, from their R&D standpoint have uh, have have developed and are delivering. So. Um, you know, a lot of functional capabilities are uh, being um, worked on as we speak, uh, and also a lot of technolo technological uh, enhancements as well. Uh, particularly in the Netlink side is one big thing, and and uh, that's that's really I think everybody's waiting for the the, the rounding out and the final you know the completing of the uh, Netlink Netlink couple, uh, uh, improvements. So I, I'm uh, very you know, very bullish. I think some of the things that are on the roadmap. And also that we're getting through the enhancement request system are very very key, and uh, it's really if we can. Uh, I mean, everybody wants it faster. I uh, would like to have it tomorrow, but uh, I'm very bullish on on what's in the plan, and the, and the, and the fact that Infor has added significant amount of new resource to the XA development team to help move this along as fast as they can. So that's a long-winded answer. All right. Well, with that, we'll wrap it up. Thank you all for joining, and we hope to see you on February 5th for our fourth and final part in the web series. Brad, thank you, and everyone have a good afternoon. Thank you very much.